Good morning, Jam City. It's awesome to have you guys with us online today. I hope you've enjoyed the welcome from Zarin and the tribe update from Kaylee. Um, and I hope you guys are doing really well. I hope you've had a great week. Um, and it's awesome to be chatting to you guys again. So as you know, we've been going through the story of Daniel. And we've been looking at how we as Christians can stand out and be different in the world. And how we need to root our identity in God. But sometimes that can be difficult because it means we do have to be different. And what I shared on Monday when we, when we last chatted was to say that sometimes our difference is actually our greatest point of strength. Because that's when God can partner with us and God can come into our lives and he can work through us. And because we're being different for him and we're putting our trust in him, his power is revealed through us. And that can actually be our greatest point of strength. So just to give you a reminder of what we chatted about on Monday, the story of Daniel. Daniel's in Babylon. He's gone into his own exile, similar to our kind of quarantine and lockdown that we're in now. It's a foreign place, a foreign land. He doesn't know the people and everything just seems different and there's uncertainty. Very similar to what we're going through now. And he's on this training program to become one of the top servants of the king in Babylon. And the head of the training program says to him, Daniel, you've got to eat this diet and it's going to make you really strong and be a great servant for the king. But the food that he's been told that he has to eat is food that God said to the Israelites when Daniel was an Israelite. He said, you can't eat that food. That's not holy food. And so Daniel had to say to the commander, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't eat this food. And the commander wasn't happy because he said, well, this food is there to make you strong and the, kin the king is going to shout at me because you're going to be very weak because you're not eating all the food that we've planned for you. So Daniel said, no, I've got an idea. Let's do a 10 day experiment. I'll eat nothing but vegetables and water. And at the end of 10 days, you can have a look at me and see what I look like and then you can decide. And so lo and behold, after 10 days, it says in um, Daniel chapter 1 verse 15, at the end of 10 days, he looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. And so there it was. Daniel had proved that just by relying on God and trusting in God and obeying God, he could actually be stronger. And so what I want to talk about today are some further lessons we can take from that. I want to read to you from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest, and I want you to listen to this, if we do not give up. If we do not give up. That is such an important end to that sentence. Because what that verse is saying is that don't get tired of doing good. Don't get tired of being different for God. Don't get tired of doing the right thing. Because if we don't give up, we will reap a harvest. A harvest would be... Um, you know, at the end of the farming season, all your crop is grown and you've got all your fruits and all your vegetables. And it's this beautiful time where you can go and gather all the good things that you've worked so hard throughout the year to build up. And in many ways that applies to our lives now with COVID, with, with school, with your families. Um, think of your homework that you have to do every day. You've got to do a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. But if you don't give up doing that, at the end of the year, you're going to get a great mark and it's going to be awesome. And you're going to celebrate and you're you're going to get a pat on the back because you've, you've reaped a harvest because you haven't given up. There were so many times in the story of Daniel where he could have given up. He could have said, I'm not going to obey God here. I'm just going to do what the Babylonians say. I'm going to eat their food. But he did not give up. And there are many, many other times, um, and we'll get into those stories in the next few weeks of Daniel, where he didn't give up and God actually worked through him and reaped a really, really incredible harvest. One of the amazing things that happened in the story of Daniel was that the king of Babylon, who did not believe in God, who actually had mocked God, eventually he turned around and he believed in God and his whole life was changed. And one of the reasons for this, which is the next point that I want us to get to, is that when we don't give up and we keep doing good, we can actually be a light to those around us. And essentially, Daniel was a light to the Babylonians because he was different. He showed that, well, look, I don't have to eat the food that you guys eat. My God can strengthen me and I'll be stronger than everybody else. And they looked at that and they said, wow, clearly there is a God. And clearly the God that Daniel serves is the one true God. And so I'm going to believe in him. And that's what they did. And that's how 
his actions was actually him being a light to the world. And in many ways we can do that. Think of times where you can speak kindly to someone at school or you can stand up for someone being bullied or you can maybe not swear like everybody else is or not watch things on your phone that sometimes other people are watching. If we do those things, if we can never give up in doing good, then we can actually be a light to our friends, to our families, to those around us, and that can turn people to God. And then the last point that I want to make, and I'm going to read from Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18. It says, There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. I think with COVID and all the uncertainty that we've had, it's really easy to doubt what's going to happen in the future. What, what is there to hope for? I mean, we're hoping for a vaccine and we're hoping that all of this is going to end, but it never seems to end. And I want to, I want to encourage you guys to keep on hoping and to keep on trusting in God because he promises us that there is a future hope for us. And I think that's often what Daniel had in, in Babylon. He hoped that, you know, things would get better and they would turn around and they might go back to, to Israel. And we can carry on keeping on hoping. That is the reason why we don't give up, because there is surely a future hope for us. A few weeks ago, I was feeling quite hopeless. And with COVID and having to do university online, and I was all alone at home every day, sitting at my desk, staring at my computer, it was really boring. And I felt quite distant from God. And I just prayed, Lord, can you please just soften my heart to you and just, just let me... Keep my hope in you and keep focusing in you, on you and just not losing hope of what you have got planned for us this year, even with COVID and everything. And God answered my prayer. Within a few days, I just felt the position of my heart changed and I could just see that, that he's still got a plan for us. And then we started Jam City Online and I've been so inspired and filled with hope by chatting to you guys again and doing this and having church again. And, and seeing you guys on the WhatsApp groups, doing the activities and all of that. Um, and so I just want to encourage you to not give up hoping and to not give up doing good and to carry on being a light in the world. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to still meet together, even though we can't do it in person. Thank you that you promise us that there is a future hope and that it will not be cut off. And we just cling to that, God, and I just pray that as we go to school this week, Lord, that you would just encourage us to continue to not give up doing good, to not give up being different, and to not give up obeying you and following you, Lord, in the way that we speak to others, in the way that we treat others, and in the way that we speak to you in our prayers, God, and think about you, Lord. Would we do good in our minds? Would we do good through our actions? And would we do good through the way that we speak, Lord? Lord, please change our hearts and please just reveal your hope to us. Help us to be your light in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome, guys. That's all that I've got for you this week in terms of my message. We're going to end off with one big, loud worship song to finish now. So if you're watching at home, I want to encourage you to try and stand up, get up with your families, sing loud, pretend like we're just at church. And carry on engaging with us on the WhatsApp groups. We love seeing you guys doing the activities that we send through. Um, and we love hearing what you guys want from these sessions um, and what you want from online. Thank you so much and God bless.